Director Guthrie, first, uh, on behalf of the entire state, thank you so much for your leadership and what you've done during this difficult time. My pleasure. A lot of people have been asking about, what about Hurricane Nicole? Will there be a declaration there? Is the governor looking at that? Is your team looking at that? Right. So Hurricane Nicole, we just finished our what we call public assistance damage assessments on Monday. So what's going to happen there is now we're drafting that document for the governor's signature. We hope to have that to the governor this week. All right. And, and what, what's the criteria for that? What are you looking for here? What's so, the assessment that's made? It, it's, it's rather complicated, but there's basically uh, about six categories of work that we look at from uh, emergency protective measures to debris. And in this case, this is going to be a beaches storm. So we're looking at that category G, beaches and parks. Uh, so we've been out all the, from Palm Beach County all the way north to the state line looking at beaches and the damage that's been done there. So we will put all of that data how much uh, sand was lost on the beach, what the uh, seawalls have done, et cetera. Put all of that into the document that we send to the governor. All of that data, then governor signs off on it, requesting a major disaster declaration for public assistance, and then also a major disaster declaration for individual assistance. So that'll be to the actual homeowners and renters and things of that nature to make them eligible for FEMA uh, funding. Uh, can I put you on the spot? How many counties are we talking about? I think you're going to look at somewhere around 10 to 12 counties um, as a part of that. It may be a few more. Uh, we're, the data, we're, we're literally today going over all that data to see uh, what is eligible. We're going to try to get as many of those counties in, uh, involved in that as we possibly can. But I think you're probably looking at somewhere around 10 to 12 of those counties. I'm assuming Volusia County is on that list. Oh, yes, uh, absolutely. What was your... I've asked you this before, but your assessment seeing it firsthand, I remember you said the photos yeah. didn't do it justice. Yeah, photos and videos do, do no justice. Uh, you need to be on the beach to really understand. Um, you know, in, in emergency management, we always talk about an X, Y, but in, you know, especially in the military and, and law enforcement, fire rescue, emergency services, there's this Z component. The Z component is the, the depth of what is going on, that three-dimensional depth. When you're standing up on, the, uh, up on A1A, US1, and then you look down 20 feet, you don't get that from a video. You don't get that from a still picture. You have to see it in person. And when you see that in person, it's, you know, we don't have the cliffs of more here, but, you know, to see a beach in Florida that now has a cliff beach instead of a, like a 10 to 1 engineered beach, that is very, very different. Our reporter, uh, Molly Reed, uh, featured some work that your team is doing now. And I know it's temporary, but it's also experimental, isn't it? That, what is this a, all about? What's happening there? Yeah, so what we're doing is we're testing a product. The, the Florida Division of Emergency Management has some products to respond with when it comes to flood controls. Uh, there are a, a system called U.S. Flood Control or Tiger Dam. Um, what we do with that in a regular disaster, we did this in Hurricane Ian, we set that stuff up around hospitals. We set it up around critical infrastructure like lift stations and things of that nature. We have over five miles of this uh, this flood barrier, flood control barrier. Um, it was used one time before in the Gulf of Mexico for the BP oil spill, uh, but we have decided to go out and test it on, uh, on about 3,000 feet of Volusia County uh, beaches to help keep the tide out so that the homeowners and the condo owners can actually try to start fixing, get that debris out of there and start fixing what they've got to do because we've got to work. You know, Nicole and Ian took that from the beach to the house to fix it, we've got to go from the house back to the beach. So this is going to allow the homeowners to get in there and get that debris out of there and then start working with their insurance companies to try to get uh, land or sand and fill back in there and start building that beach back to their property line so that then Volusia County, Daytona Beach Shores, Wilbur by the Sea, uh, City of Daytona Beach can start working from that point back out to the ocean. Layman's question, how much of this material do we have? Can we do the whole coastline? No, not, we, we don't have nearly enough to do the whole coastline. We, we've got somewhere around five miles. We may have as much as eight miles of this. Um, I'm not exactly sure on that number, but I know we have over five miles of this uh, barrier protection. And again, we use it in, in storms and flood areas to help protect the, those hospitals and critical infrastructure when we have an isolated event. When we have a hurricane, a Cat 4 hurricane, or even a Cat 1 hurricane, we don't have nearly enough to protect everything that we have. But now that we're beyond the flood situation, we thought this was a really good concept to at least test and see if we can protect those homes and those condos. And right now it's been out for about a thousand feet of it has been out for about 24 to 36 hours and is holding the ocean back so that people can actually get in there and get their uh, houses, um, you know, the debris out of their houses. So the theory so far is standing. <clears throat> yeah, the theory so far is standing. That's correct. Your reaction to that? Uh, I, you know, there's my, my, th my reaction is, you know, we had to try something. Um, this seemed like a good option. 
and I'm glad that the option that we tried is actually working. So um, I'm, I'm excited it's working. We're going to keep uh, some houses from going in the ocean. I, I firmly believe that. I think eventually we'll, we'll keep condos or hotels, hotels from going in the ocean as well. So we're working, we're working on that every single day. We've got a team out there uh, on the beach right now. They're there 24-7. A lot of people don't know that. You know, as a part of the permit that we did with DEP, we have to monitor that 24-7 so that if anything breaks loose, we're right there at high tide or low tide or whatever it might be to get that and keep it from going into the ocean. Okay. Uh, it, since the theory is being proved a success, will you buy m more material? Right now, at, at going into Hurricane Ian and Hurricane Nicole, we bought everything that this particular um, vendor had on the shelf. So we, we cleaned their shelves out. Um, well, there may be some other options out there, and we'll certainly look, look at it if, that is, you know, if, if it is a viable option. Do, are we going to be able to buy 37 miles of it for uh, Volusia County? Are we going to be able to buy 275 miles of it for the state of Florida? I don't know that that's practical. Um, maybe emergency berms in some areas will do just as good a job. So it's got to be a holistic, multi-strategy approach that uh, ends up saving our coastline. We're excited about the task force because you've been working on this tirelessly. You'll be bringing in one of the top people from FEMA, uh, other federal and state leaders. What's the plan for the task force? What's the thinking behind it? Well, the plan for the task force is, you know, my, myself and my counterpart, the federal coordinating officer, Tom McCool, um, sat in a room and said, hey, how can we, with what we did with debris down in southwest Florida for, you know, Charlotte, Collier, uh, Lee, uh, Sarasota counties, DeSoto County, how can we just do something creative there on beaches? Can we do that? And we said, well, we got to get the right people in the room. That was the first thing we had to do. There's a lot of federal agencies, a lot of state agencies that are involved in that. So on December the 5th, we'll be meeting with Victoria Salinas, who is the uh, uh, number three person at FEMA, that's going to come in. And, and we're going to sit down and have a conversation about what can we do? What may we be able to do? we got to see what, you know, um, what the uh, codes and the federal regulations and the rules say we can and can't do, and then try to come up with something that's creative. So we're, we're looking forward to that. We're going to have in, individuals like uh, Sean Hamilton from DEP, Dane Eagle from DEO. We're going to have Jared Perdue from DOT, myself from the state agencies. We'll probably have somebody from Volunteer Florida because I was out there just this last weekend, and Volusia County is not the same. It, it was almost desolate this last weekend with people just not being there. And there should have been a lot of people there for Thanksgiving weekend on vacation. So we want to make sure we're looking at those economic opportunities. From the federal side of the house, we're looking at EPA, U.S. Army Corps, perhaps the Coast Guard, um, Department of Interior, Parks, uh, U.S. Parks, and things uh, and agencies like that, uh, NOAA, the fisheries program. Again, what can we bring to the table thinking holistically about all of these federal and state agencies that we might be able to come up with a product that will be revolutionary, it'll be innovative, and we try to get away from renourishing our beaches to actually restoring and making them more resilient. Boy, well, we talk about wanting to be a fly on the table. Uh, what's the conversation? Give me a sneak peek. What's the conversation like? Does everyone sort of brainstorm or they have some right. ideas coming in? So, you know, I, and I'll, I'll say it, state and federal agencies are bureaucratic. So I think the, we'll start out with, well, I'm not really sure if we can do that. I'm not really sure if we can do that. And then we got to get into the weeds of what does the U.S. federal code, what does Florida state statute say that we can't and can't do? Because you got some, there, there are some problems here. You got private homeowners. Typically, we do not use taxpayer dollars to help fix private homeowners' um, beach, uh -huh. their property. We do not give money to condo associations and hotels and private sector. You know, that's typically an insurance first type situation. So we're, we may have to look at the way that we dole out money. And again, that's got to look at it from a federal standpoint as well as a, um, as a state standpoint. At some point in time, when we actually, what we're trying to do is develop some options. In other words, this is a menu of things that we can do, whether that's berms, it's seawalls, it's um, bring in sand, uh, whatever those options are. We then want to go probably in January, February and meet with cities and counties and say, okay, we have worked together as a federal team, as a state team, collaboratively, coordinating with each other, and these are the things that we think we can get done. What works best for your community? That's overall what we're trying to do with the task force, and I'm, I'm very, very appreciative of Victoria Salinas and uh, Tom McCool, uh, Deanne Criswell herself, uh, in allowing us to have a conversation. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Ann Bink as well. Um, we just got all the right people from FEMA, you know, the top four or five people in FEMA coming to the table, and they want to get something done. They want to be innovative of how we do this, but we also want to get to a point where we stop just dumping sand on the beach, right? Now, that's the way we've always done it for the last, you know, 60, 70 years. Yeah. But how do we get to a point where we're not just restoring beaches, we're making more resilient? 
you confident you can do that? I'm confident we can do that. Uh, I'm looking forward to the governor's leadership on this. The governor is very, um, he, he is very pro resiliency in Florida. Uh, I think between his uh, vision of trying to create a more resilient Florida and then my tactical approach of let's go out there and see what we can do and then work within those concepts. And then maybe we have to go to the legislature through the governor to talk about innovative ideas that we may have never done before. Yeah. Uh, let people know how special having uh, Ms. Salinas here. I mean, oh, yeah, no. She, her uh, specialty in resilience is outstanding. Yeah, yeah she, she's, uh, she's not necessarily new to FEMA, but you know, she, she moved into this position to actually have the, the Associate Administrator of Resilience actually come in and have this conversation. Um, you know, we're going to have Dr. Wes Brooks uh, has been invited to that uh, meeting as well. He's the Chief Resiliency Officer for the state of Florida. It's my hope. You know, my job is to coordinate people. At the end of the day, it's my hope that Victoria and Dr. Brooks end up becoming the face of this and trying to work together to make sure that uh, we, we build a, a resilient beach and a resilient Florida. Will we literally have everybody in one room or will people be doing Zoom as well? Or um, It's my understanding we're trying to work that out right now. We may have a couple of one-offs that have to call in via Zoom because they just can't get away from D.C. But I mean, we're, we're talking about district folks, state folks, but we're talking about going to D.C. and actually getting D.C. personnel involved in this conversation. So we want to make sure that we have, we, we've got agency heads, the, the governor is committed to it, he's 100% he's supported me on this. Um, so I've got state agency heads coming, we want federal agency heads to be involved in this as well. We're going to actually, we're not leaving, we're going to stay there, we're going to get in a room, we're going to, I don't want to say we're going to lock ourselves in there, right. but we're going to close the doors and we're going to sit there and figure out what we can get done in this area. You know, um, when we did the uh, rapid debris removal in those five southwest Florida counties, there were a, a group of men and women uh, that were really good at IT. They were really good at um, uh, artificial type uh, looking at, at photographs and things of that nature. They worked in a room 20 hours a day for about four days to come up with what ended up being the rapid debris removal system in Southwest Florida where we are, we, we've got 20 million cubic yards of debris already picked up. That, I mean, that's more than we had in Hurricane Michael. And we did that in 60 days, not 180. So these men and women of FEMA in the state of Florida, my team, their team, get them in the right room, get them together, let them start having the conversations about what can we do? What can we do legislatively? What can we do legally? What can we do by rules and administration? And then come up with that tactic, those strategies, if you will, of this can be done in this situation. So that, again, my hope is, that for lack of a better term, there's, there's an Excel spreadsheet that says, if you have engineered beaches, these programs apply. If you have non-engineered beaches, these programs apply. If you're a, a private homeowner, these, apply. And again, some of that might be, and especially for private homeowners, is the Small Business Administration. So they may end up trying to go and get a Small Business Administration loan at around 3% to help uh, rebuild their home, So, in including uh, fill and sand. What do we do for next year, though? Because I know you and I were talking about this is going to take years to repair. Yeah, so what we're going to have to do for next year is, you know, we're going to have to be much more proactive. Um, when people call for evacuations, we need to evacuate. We need to try to shore up the, uh, the beach as much as we possibly can. Again, that'll be done with a lot of emergency berms, I imagine. Um, so, you know, we'll, and we will depend heavily on the U.S. Army Corps for that. So uh, we're going to get as much uh, repaired as we possibly can. Uh, make sure that, you know, there are going to be individuals from state and federal government over the, the course of the next year, maybe two, that are going to be coming in and asking for a right of entry so that they can get to those berms and recreate those berms or maybe repair a seawall or maybe, you know, do some beach renourishment. Please understand that that is that's required. We've got to be able to do that so that we get that right of entry, so we can go onto your property and, and renourish that beach. So those are all things that are going to be legit um, over the next year, maybe even two. But next year, we're going to have to be very, very proactive about how we uh, respond to a disaster in, uh, along the east coast of Florida. Do you need approval for each? section of the tiger dams do you have to put in for another approval right every time we, we lay a we lay a section so we're we're currently in the process of laying 3,000 feet that 3,000 feet is a permit we're looking at doing another short 500 foot section which is about two homes so that 500 foot, foot section requires a different uh, a separate permit so every time we put down a link of this stuff we're going to have to get a separate permit the nice thing about it is and i want to you know thank the men and women of dep um, typically, when you have a permit from state government, local government, federal government, it can take months. DEP got this thing turned around, I believe, in 12 days. 
So I appreciate the fact and the hard work and late nights that they put into uh, looking at this and getting us that uh, permit turned around as quickly as they did. Um, now that they've done it, they know what's going on. We expect that those permits that we go to DEP for will turn around much faster. How many of your members are there right now at Volusia on the coast? Uh, between contractors and the deputy director, there's probably about 100 people out there on the beach right now working these issues. Think they'll be uh, wrapped up on the Tiger Dams this week? Oh, absolutely. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. By today or later? No, it, it'll probably be in the next three days, two to three days, because we'll, we'll finish this 3,000 foot stretch probably today, maybe tomorrow. Again, it's all dependent on tide cycles, right? So um, we'll, we'll finish that up probably tomorrow, and then we'll do that 500 foot section, which will probably take us into Wednesday, maybe Thursday, but we should certainly be done getting all that stuff up in the test areas by no later than Friday night. I'm intrigued by this one thing, Director. What if we had a hurricane? Would you put those tiger dams up? Yeah, so we, we don't know. Right? The, the short answer is we don't know. You know, if we had a tropical storm, a nor'easter, it certainly looks like it would hold up. If we get, you know, uh, right now we've got 36 inch tubes sitting on top of each other, which actually gives us about 65 inches of height. So if we start to get into a situation where we have storm surge over 65 inches or over, you know, six feet tall, um, now we've got a problem, right? So that, that storm surge is gonna go right over the top of that. So um, I don't know that the right answer is, you know, we, we had 18 feet of storm surge down in Fort Myers Beach. There's not enough Tiger Dam in the world to go up 18 feet and hold that in place. Yeah, good point. Um, what else didn't I ask? Um, one thing that I would uh, Whatever you want. Take, take the time to talk about is yeah. Uh, ianrecovery.fl.gov. Okay. This is the, uh, uh, the governor put out a press release this last week um, on if you need sheltering, you need a travel trailer, uh, go on to ianrecovery.fl.gov and uh, make sure you sign up there. I know that you and I talked about that yes, last week yes. in an interview, but again, we've, we've got about a thousand people that have gone into that system and started filling it out. We anticipate, as I mentioned in my last interview, that there's probably going to be upwards of 10,000 people that may be eligible for and um, you know, need, in need of housing. I hope it's not that many, but if it is, we're ready to respond to that. So again, ianrecovery.fl.gov to go in there and sign that up. Again, if you still need help with uh, cleanup, iandebriscleanup.com is another website to go to if you need help getting uh, private property debris removed and you need to get it you know, taken off your property, uh, commercial property or private property, we can do that as, as well as a part of the uh, disaster debris waivers that have been given to us by FEMA. So those two websites are websites we want people going to especially, and those are Ian related right now, right? So again, ianrecovery.fl.gov and iandebriscleanup.com, those are Ian specific. If we get approved, this week or into the next week by FEMA for an individual assistance declaration or a um, public assistance declaration. We will then open that up to Nicole survivors as well. I'm glad you brought that up because only a thousand, I'm surprised. I'm thinking with the holiday, a lot of people haven't heard about this yet. Right. And this is helpful, isn't it? Yeah, Mike, and, and, this, and I appreciate your partnership on this because we could not get that information out. We, we put it out all over social media. We do press releases, but it's, it's folks like you and, and networks like yours that help us get that information out. You are a trusted partner. You are a partner that we must depend on to get our messaging out, and I appreciate you taking the time to get that done. It's our pleasure. I mean, we say getting results, and obviously you, you've been getting results. Yep, we have been getting results. How much will FEMA give us if that declaration for Nicole is approved? So Any idea? There's, there's no necessarily cap to it. What it will be is that we're approved for that. So I imagine it'll be a 75-25 match um, as a part of Hurricane Nicole because it was a smaller storm. Most likely it'll be a 75-25 match, but all of the eligible expenses will be covered um, in those categories of work. So uh, all the debris will be covered, all the emergency protective measures will be covered, the beaches will be covered, uh, where we, again, eligible activities. And again, there's some beaches that are not eligible because they're a natural beach versus an engineered beach. And those are things that we're going to try to work through with the task force next week on Monday. Oh, that's a good point. Boy, we're talking about a lot of beach, aren't we? A lot of beach. And a lot of man hours? A lot of beach, a lot of man hours, a lot of year hours. It's, it's not it, going to be overnight, is no, it? No, it is not going to be overnight. It's going to take years uh, to get our beaches back to where they need to be. What's your gut tell you? Are we going to get the approval on that declaration? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm confident we're going to get some type of uh, approval there. Um, is it going to be for all the counties we ask for? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but, you know, I, the, the um, FEMA Administrator, Dan Criswell, has been very, very responsive um, to our letters and uh, asking questions uh, or doing what we call requests for information so that she has a, a full picture. I really appreciate that about her is that she, she never makes a decision 
knee jerk. She asks for information. She asks for intelligence and, and, and make sure that we're making the right decision both for the state and for the federal government to do that. So uh, I appreciate her partnership there. And, uh, you know, she'll, she'll dive into the details, ask us questions, and uh, make the determination from there. How successful has the First Lady's fund been so far? Well, I mean, over $50 million. That, I think that's the most we've ever taken in. I, I'm not, that, we might need to check that as a fact, but I, I'm almost positive uh, that's the largest amount of volunteer funding that we've ever taken in. And, you know, the First Lady's uh, disaster fund is doing very, very well. It's over $50 million, and she is out there uh, just about every week putting information and out as far as how to donate, and she's also putting the dollars on the street. So uh, we're working with her um, as a part of that. She just uh, gave some uh, funding to the Emergency Preparedness Association to help emergency management personnel that lost some of their property, also to the Florida Sheriff's Association, some other public sector, um, public safety types uh, to, to help them recover. Uh, we are getting to the point now where we're getting ready to move into other areas and work uh, w with individuals. So. Um, hopefully we'll get that done here in the next couple of weeks. I, I think you'll probably hear um, the uh, First Lady and the Governor having some programs or some ideas uh, rolling out probably here in the next, uh, could be this week or in, in the next couple of weeks, but certainly defer to them on how we're going to get uh, as we move into this holiday season. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you. We're honored to have you here today. What brings you to the Orlando area? Yeah, so the, yesterday I was meeting with the American Water Works Association, the Florida chapter, um, and they, they realized that they're not the best at uh, FEMA reimbursement and FEMA documentation. So it was important enough for us to make sure that we do it right, that I went ahead and attended that conference and, and did a 20-minute uh, presentation on how to be better at uh, documenting um, what you do in the field so that FEMA can help reimburse you. So I, I spent that time there yesterday. I've been around to a couple of EOCs and, and drove through a couple of neighborhoods with uh, damage that was here is associated with the flooding. Uh, I'll be heading over to Tampa most likely tomorrow and uh, doing uh, something for the Florida Association County's legislative conference there. Again, making sure that counties get back every single penny that they're entitled to and making sure they're doing their documentation the correct way, making sure that we're reviewing their contracts, reviewing their procurements, making sure that everything is solid. Those are things we can do ahead of a storm so that we've stopped the madness of FEMA clawbacks because the number one reason for clawbacks is lack of documentation. The second reason is that they didn't procure something correctly. Clawbacks? We can I've never heard yep. that. Yeah, so when FEMA comes back two, three, four, six years down the road and uh, says that was an ineligible activity or that procurement wasn't correct, what they'll do is they'll take that money that they gave them right after the disaster and they'll take that money back. So then that leaves that city, that county, and even the state sometimes upside down because they'll take that money right away. They'll take that money right back from the state of Florida and the uh, recipients of that. So um, we, we, have to, we, we can stop that from happening. We can mitigate that from happening. And it just takes us getting into the right uh, conferences and making sure we uh, notify people of what they need to do to be successful uh, with taxpayer dollars.